Let's have a play with Quasar's Q scroll area component. This is basically going to allow us to create our own area where the user can scroll and take control of the styling of that scroll area as well. Q dash scroll dash area. And I'll put just a comment in here and then we'll come up and add some styling because I want to give a set height here. Let's try 400 pixels and a set width as well of 300 pixels. That should make it a little bit clear where it is on the screen. And then we'll come in here and we'll say div and we want to have quite a bit of content. So an easy way to do that is just a for loop. We'll say n in 100. So whatever's here is going to be spat out 100 times and I'll throw in there some lorem ipsum. Lorem tab, that'll give us some lorem ipsum and we'll need a key here as well. So let's say the key is equal to n. There we go. We've got a scroll area. And notice that it's styled a little bit differently. And that's because Quasar is using the material design spec to create its own scroll bar there. Really cool. And by the way, this works horizontally as well. So we can easily test that by grabbing all of this div here, control shift P wrap. And we're going to wrap that in a div that is a row. And then I can also say dot no dash wrap. And the reason I'm doing no wrap is because if I don't say no wrap, every div is probably just going to wrap under the other. So that's why we had no wrap there so that they go all the way to the end infinitely. Save it and notice now that I can scroll horizontally as well. Pretty cool. This isn't the best example, but I just wanted to show you that it works. Okay, let's get rid of this div on the outside, the wrapping div, come back to our original example and see what else we can do. Well, we can change the style of the bar. So if you want to add a bar in here, notice that it's just white space, whereas usually, like in VS Code, you get this bar so that you can see where the scroller is going to move along. So I think that's helpful and it's a little bit nicer for the user. So let's go ahead and say bar dash style here, give it an object, and that's going to be our styles for the bar. I'll say border dash radius. I think this will look better with a radius and say nine pixels for that border radius. Get rid of the dash. We'll also give it a background color, background color, and I'll set it to black for now. Let's just see if that's going to work. Yeah, there we go. Notice there's a bit of transparency and that's because transparency is applied by default, but I'll show you how you can change that if you want to. And I want to be able to use our palette. So let's come in here. This is a really cool trick. You can say import colors from Quasar. And this allows you to basically grab any colors from Quasar's palette and do some cool stuff with colors. But we're just going to say const and then object is equal to colors. And what are we going to pluck out of here? I think it's called, yeah, get palette color. So now we can use this function to get any color on the Quasar palette as a hex value. In other words, I can just come up here and say get palette color and then just pass it through something like indigo. And that's going to give us Quasar's indigo color. There we go. It works. However, do notice that our track still seems to be gray. So we're going to fix that up in a second as well. Sorry, not the track, the, the thumb. So we call this thing the thumb, the thing that we grab onto. You can kind of imagine you're holding a phone and maybe you grab onto that with your thumb. Whereas this other section here is the track. Okay, moving on. How about we come in here and we also give it some width. Width is equal to, I'm going to try 14 pixels. I want it to be quite wide. There we go. So notice that the thumb is not sitting snugly on the track. So that's something that we'll have to fix. And then something else that we'll add is opacity. Because I did say that I'd mention this. And you could set it to something like 1, meaning that it's 100% opacity. Or you could go down to something like 0 0.3, for example. Yeah, just to fade it out a little bit. All right, that's the bar. Let's style the thumb now. Thumb dash style, we'll give that an object. And let's put in here a border radius as well. Border radius. And I'm going to set that to, well, if we have a width of 14 pixels, half of 14 is seven. So we probably want that to be seven pixels. And we also, we also want to set this to the same width of the bar. At least in this example, I'll do that. So let's give it a width of 14 pixels. See what I get from that. All right, looking nice. It now fits the track nicely because they're the same width. What else can we do? We'll also give it a background color. And once again, we can, you can use this get palette color, set that equal to indigo as well. All right, that's looking a little bit better. And I don't think I want any opacity on this. Let's see what it looks like if we give it a full opacity. 
So I'll set opacity equal to 1. There we go. Maybe like 0 0.9. So it's a tiny bit opacity. I can't even tell the difference, to be honest. <laughs> but you get the idea. We get a bit of control here. Now, another thing you could do is make this thumb a little bit thinner, but then also push it to the left so it still fits correctly inside of the track. I'll show you what I mean by that. So rather than making the thumb the same width as the bar, let's make it a bit smaller and set it to 10. And there we go. Notice it's smaller, but it doesn't fit. So then you can say right here to basically push it from the right, and we'll say two pixels. And there we go. Now it's still centered, but it's a little bit smaller. So that might be something that you're after. And if you look at the Quasar docs, there's a whole bunch of little bits and pieces you can do to style the bar and the thumb. And you can also style the vertical bar and the horizontal bar separately. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you do, that too is possible. And so now let's move on to content styling. We can say content.active.style and basically say, hey, when this is active, I want you to change, for example, the background color. So now let's make that an object and we'll add a colon here. And how about we just change the background color? So background color is equal to get palette color and maybe just like a gray dash one. And now when we focus it, okay, you can't really tell because it's not gray enough. Let's make it a four. And when it's unfocused, we don't get the gray. When it's focused, we get the gray. You could even do something funky like this maybe. You could say black as the background color. And then you could set the text color equal to white. Yeah. All right, I don't really like it to be honest, but you get the idea. You can sort of play around with this if you want to. But I'll remove that for now. Another thing we can do is tell the scroll bar to always be visible. We can do that by saying visible. And that means that there's no focusing and unfocusing to make it visible. It's just always going to be on. So that's pretty much the crux of this Q scroll area. But there are a couple of other things I want to show you, like some methods and the scroll event. So let's come in here and we'll add a couple of methods. In order to do that, we need a ref. So ref is going to be equal to, I'll just call this scroll area component. Let's go with that. And now when we have a ref, of course, we need to come down here and say const scroll area component is equal to a ref. Press tab so that ref is imported. Separate these out a little bit. And that's going to be nothing, which means that view is automatically going to set scroll area component to this component for us behind the scenes. View does that automatically. Now what we can do is have a button up here that is going to allow us to scroll to a certain area within the scroll area. I'll show you what I mean. Q dash button. When you click on this button, I want you to grab the scroll area component and I want you to call on it, set scroll position. And we also need to specify, hey, we're going to set it vertically. So set the vertical scroll position and let's say a thousand there. And how, how about we call this label scroll to a thousand, maybe add a comma in there. All right, we click on here and it scrolls to a thousand pixels down. And you might want to set that equal to something like 4,000. And there you go. So there's a few things you could do to play around with this. If you want, you can animate it as well. And all you have to do for that is to add another parameter here. And we can see we're getting a hint here that says duration. Let's set the duration equal to 200 milliseconds. And there we go. How cool is that? That's all we have to do to get an animated scroll. Now, the last thing I want to show you is events. So if we come down here and we say at scroll. We can then say on scroll. And this function is going to be called whenever the user scrolls. So I'll come down here now, create a function called on scroll, and let's just get the details out of that so I can show you what you have available to you. Details, open up the console. We might go full screen so we can see this properly. And scrolling down a bit, let's have a look at what we get. And there we are, basically everything that you're going to need to know about what happened during that scroll event. So if you need that functionality, it's right there available to you.
Notice you even get a ref to the element that was scrolled. So you can get a ref to this scroll area and then do something on the scroll area based on that. So maybe this might be a silly example, but maybe when you hit the bottom, you then take the ref and you tell it to scroll all the way up to the top. So there's a few different things you could do with all of this information. Okay, that's about it for the Q scroll area component. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.